As most of you know, we're into our second week of our seven-part sermon series on testifying to love. And uh, last week was testifying to... Oh, it's not good. <laughs> Try again. Last week is testifying to... Whisper. Like, like Phil says, be cool, be brave. Righteous. Like, righteous, yes. That's by the righteous love. Thank you, the praise team. Um, for those of you who missed the sermon last week, whether you were here or not, um, <laughs> uh, it, it's, it, it's up on the internet. You can go to our webpage and you can see last week's sermon. And you don't have to watch the whole thing. The title is right there. That's the Bible Righteous Love. Anyway, yeah, so and this week we're testifying to unfettered love. We're going to talk about unfettered love. And I, and I guess before we discuss what it means to be, uh, to testify to unfettered love, to be unfettered, we really need to know what it means to be fettered, right? Uh, who knows what a fetter is? I'm using the word as a noun now, an object. So I've got two hands up. I'm going to go with Gail. I'm going to go with Gail. Okay. okay, to restrain or remove an animal. That's probably true. Um, it's not the definition I got out of what I was looking at, but we use that word a lot, a lot more uh, today than, than probably before. Uh, how about anybody else have an idea of what it is? If there's something wrong, you could have done it better. <laughs> <laughs> I love these interactive circles. <laughs> Turn it away. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so in other words, I'm going to read you the definition. Um, <laughs> fetters are a, are a physical restraint used on feet or ankles, allowing walking but preventing running and kicking. The term fetter shares a root with the word foot. I didn't know that. Uh, apparently, the technical term for uh, the technical term for fetter are those things around the ankles or, or that restrain the feet that keep us from running. Uh, but metaphorically, we use a fetter for anything that restricts or restrains in any way. And there we, before we get the understanding of unfettered to keep us from being restrained. So to be fettered means to be restrained, encumbered, restricted. And unfettered means to be unrestrained, unencumbered, unrestricted. <coughs> the scriptures are full of, of stories and testimonies to God's unfettered love for us. Probably my favorite story that I think speaks to that uh, is the story of the prodigal son. Uh, you've got uh, Jesus telling this parable of the prodigal son, and, and the father in the story represents God, and, and the son represents uh, humanity, represents the rest of us. And the son wants his inheritance before his dad dies. Um, that's probably not a great relationship starter, you know. <laughs> dad, you know, it's it taken a real long time to die. Can I have my money now? Uh, and, and, you know, because I got some stuff I want to do. Uh, I want to break the relationship with you and move out. And I kind of have stuff now. And, you know, it's, it, and it's not a real great situation. But in that story, this, this, this man who represents God gives himself, gives the inheritance that was due uh, his son to his son right then and there. He, he gives that unrestrained love. He allows his son to do what he wants to do. Good idea, bad idea, don't know. But he lets his son just do what he wants to do. So his son takes all that, that stuff, the, the, the inheritance of part of his dad's estate, and he, he moves out and he goes in, in, into a foreign land, it tells us. Now, when we're talking about a, a parable in the, in the Jewish setting, and we're talking about a foreign land, we're, we're talking Gentiles. He moves out of, out of the safe community of, of the Jews, out of the support system, and, and goes out into the world. And he lives a horrible life of spending money on all kinds of things, and winds up uh, broke, and, and a famine hits the land, and he's starving, and he's working for this pig farmer. Now, Jews and pigs, that's not really a good thing. It, uh, it, it's it's, uh, it's uh, unkosher to be touching the pigs and working with pigs. So this is how far he's fallen. He's, he's working for a pig farmer and he's, and he's sitting there and he's longing to eat the food, the slop that he's given to the pigs. He's longing to eat that slop. That's how hungry he is. And he starts thinking, you know what? The servants in my father's house have it better than I do. The servants of my father's house have it better. So he says, I'm going back and, and, I, and I'm going to ask my, my dad if he'll let me not come back as a son, but come back as a servant so that, you know, that I can tell him how sorry I am that I did what I did. And, and he's rehearsing what he's going to say as he's walking back. He's kind of mulling it over. Okay, dad, I'm sorry. I'm a servant. And as he's doing that, his dad loves him so great. 
and has been looking for him, has been longing for him, has been wondering. 